40 years of inaction that we've seen. Well, leaders from across the globe are gathering in Glasgow for the 26th United Nations Climate Change Conference. Durham is having its own foray into climate campaigning. Over the course of the day, there will be events and speeches taking place here in Market Square, with events also taking place in St Nicholas's Church and the Town Hall. Pal TV are on the scene to speak to some of the demonstrators behind it. Today marks the Global Day of Climate Action, organised by the COP26 Coalition, with the aim of uniting everybody concerned about climate change, while spelling out their key demands. So far in Glasgow, the United States has rejoined the High Ambition Coalition that it was previously pulled out of by Donald Trump. This group's ambitions parallel those of everybody here today to limit global warming to one and a half degrees and to establish a plan for net zero by 2050. 100 countries have also committed to re-establishing devastated rainforests by 2030. However, researchers remain unsure as to whether the promises made so far are enough. Scientists at University of Melbourne predict that based on current pledges, there will be 1.9 degrees of heating, and that's only if these pledges are fully followed through. However, you've got to question if some leaders are taking it seriously enough. Joe Biden appeared to fall asleep during one of the speeches. Boris Johnson only managed to deliver his talk half an hour late, and Rishi Sunak's latest budget made no mention of the climate crisis. But COP26 is potentially the most significant climate conference in history, with a chance to review progress of the Paris Agreement and nail down plans for the future. Try telling the people around us today that climate change doesn't matter. This city has a history of climate protest, one did that play its part in propelling the world forward to change. The people protesting around us today want to be a part of that revolution. We are facing the greatest threat in human history. We've had a Prime Minister who's happy to talk the talk, but rarely manages to walk the walk. And I promised to be part of the solution, not just pointing out the problems. The climate emergency is here, and our planet depends on our action. If we don't take action now, we will mess it up. If we don't act now, there'll be little left to save. We simply cannot go fast enough and far enough. We need to act now. I think it's absolutely wonderful that there are people here today um, who are determined to call for action for our climate. And we know that we're in solidarity with those people in the hundreds of thousands of people in Glasgow who are marching through the streets to demand action. Because we cannot wait. We cannot wait any longer. The world is burning and there will be no future world for young people. So I think the students are leading the way and have been leading the way for years. Because the world's eyes and attention is on climate emergency, ecological emergency, uh, I think a lot of us can, can feel very overwhelming and can feel like we are very powerless, alone, isolated, can't do anything about it. So for us it's important to show up, demonstrate we care about the climate emergency and Actually, there is a lot of ideas and activity going on to do something about it as well. But something's going to happen. What I fear is we make nice little sort of cosmetic changes. For heaven's sake, let's not underestimate the problems it's going to cause. This is the easy bit. Running around with a banner saying, oh, yes, let's change climate. All right. What are we going to do about the difficulties? What are you going to do about your motor car? What about your holiday in Benidorm? What about this, that and the other? It's going to be difficult. You know, recycling, for example, uh, trying to eat in a more green way. It's all very good, but ultimately, I would say that it doesn't really cut it. It's trying to, as you say, it's putting an individual solution to climate change rather than a systemic global solution, which is clearly what's required. And really, in the COP26, you can sort of, you, you've got these, you've got world leaders meeting together there and it's clearly in their, the ball is in their court to do something, but they're not because they're political representatives of the capitalist system and they're tied hand and foot to the interests of big business. They care more ultimately about making a profit. I'm Cameron McAllister and you've been watching How Feedback.